So what I was going to discuss or go over in this edition of Coffee and Correct Grammar is some syntax. I'm going to do a couple sentences, syntax them with you, and explain a couple things to you for those interested. Now here's the first sentence. Are you ready? If you're watching, if you have a pen and paper, you might want to write it down so you can work along with me. And by the way, let, let me just say this. Do you know of anybody else out there who does what I do in the manner in which I do it? Do live feeds, put themselves out here to answer questions. If you do, leave a link or, or just tell me about it in the comments section uh, so I can check it out. Because I'm really curious to see how every how anyone else does this with regards to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Because as far as I know, I'm blazing a trail as we speak, and you're with me on this journey. I don't know anyone else who does this. Okay, so here's the sentence. The dog is running very fast. Period. The dog is running very fast. Now, if you've written that down, go ahead and syntax it. As you're syntaxing, I'm going to be speaking in your ear a little bit and giving you some pointers on how I do it and how I teach it. I always teach to start at the end of the sentence and work backwards okay so in this case the end of the sentence the last word is fast now first we have to identify whether the word fast is tangible or non-tangible contract do we have a tangible contract what fast means in the context of this sentence the dog is running very fast do we know what fast means? In a fiction sense. Do we have a tangible contract with it? Is that word based on a fact? If anybody would like to participate, feel free to type yes or no in the comments section so I can get your input on it, so I can see some participation. To let me know that I'm not investing this now space uh, in a futile manner that I'm actually the people are actually listening to me and learning with me I'll just give you a couple seconds yes or no do you have a tangible contract with the word fast ah thank you very much yes and that is correct I have a tangible contract with what fast is if you and I are watching a dog run across the yard, we can both say, wow, that was fast. We have a tangible contract with what fast is. It's a method of measuring speed. It's a determination of speed. It's a perception of how fast or a, a perception of motion. So it is, we have a tangible contract with that concept. Therefore, fast is tangible contract. So what do we know about tangible contract words? We know that tangible contract words will either be verbs, adjectives, or pronouns. Tangible contract words will not be adverbs, okay? So therefore, fast is either gonna be a verb or a pronoun because sentences and word groups can only end on verbs or pronouns. Why is that? Does anybody know why sentences can only end on twos or fours and never ones or threes? A sentence will never end on an adverb or an adjective. In the comments section, please let me know why that is. Why a sentence would not end on an adverb or an adjective? 
why sentences only end on verbs or pronouns. A, S are modifiers. Not sure what you mean by that, Tor Joe. Okay, yeah, I don't know what, uh, fast has no prefix or suffix. Fast is one syllable, it's one particle in and of itself. Unless you want to syntax each letter individually, but that's not what we're doing here, Tor Joe. What we're doing here is syntaxing a sentence, the dog is running very fast, and we're starting at the end and working backwards. So bear with me here. So fast is one syllable, it's one particle in this uh, scenario. We have identified that it is tangible contract. We're not talking about the word is, we're talking about the word fast. We're starting at the end and working backwards. So fast is tangible contract and it's either going to be a verb or a pronoun. It's not going to be an adjective or an adverb. Well, we know it's not going to be an adverb because it's tangible contract. Why wouldn't it be an adjective? Why wouldn't a sentence end on an adjective? Does anybody know? Does anybody know why sentences only end on verbs or pronouns in the fiction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, uh, fiction babble? Tor Joe, exactly. You got it. You got it. Because adverbs and adjectives need something to modify. There's nothing left to modify here, so that's why it's either going to be a verb or an adjective, or I'm sorry, a verb or a pronoun. More specifically, a dangling participle verb or a pronoun. So to figure that out, we have to go to the word that precedes it, which is very. We have to ask the same question. Is very tangible or is very non-tangible? Now, I give closure to a foolproof way across the board of how to determine whether a word is tangible or non-tangible. And the way to do that is to parse the word. Look it up in an etymology dictionary, find the earliest nativity root meaning of the word, and if that nativity root meaning is tangible, then the word we're looking at is also tangible. Okay? There's only one exception to that, but I'm not going to go into that right now because we're focusing on the matter at hand. So the question is, is the word very tangible or non-tangible? Nay, Neck, thank you very much for your uh, participation in this. We are not talking about that. We are actually doing grammar work here. Okay, we're talking about grammar and I'm teaching syntax. You're more than welcome to answer my question as to whether very is tangible or non-tangible. Okay, so I, I challenge students out there to look the word very up, to parse it in an etymology dictionary, and look up the root nativity meaning of it. Is that tangible or non-tangible? Because I'm going to tell you, I would syntax very as a tangible contract word. And I will tell you why. I don't know if you'll be able to see the screen. Oh, <laughs> I think it's probably backwards. You look up very. Late 13th century, true, real, genuine. From the Proto-Indo-European root, W-E-R-E, -E, uh, hyphen O, true, trustworthy. I have a tangible contract with something that is true and trustworthy. That is the nativity root meaning of the word very. I just certified it to you. This is certification. So, very is tangible contract. So we have 
tangible contract fast, preceded by tangible contract very. Now, what is the word that precedes very? Running. Is running tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Do we have a tangible contract with running? Anybody? Is running tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Correct, Tori Joe. Running is tangible. Now we get to is. Is is <laughs> depends on what your definition of is is. Is is tangible or non-tangible? Correct. Is is non-tangible. So now we've run into a non-tangible word. So now we can look at what we have so far. Fast is tangible. Very is tangible. Running is tangible. Is is non-tangible. Therefore, is is a non-tangible contract adverb modifying running into a tangible contract adjective, gerund, which is coloring very into a tangible contract adjective, which is coloring fast to a tangible contract pronoun. Now here's a little technique you can put in your back pocket. When you use my method of going backwards and you run into that adverb and you can certify that it is an adverb, and we have just certified that is is an adverb. You can take that entire section of the sentence and drop it, get rid of it. So now what do we have left? The dog. The dog is left. That's all that's left is the dog. It's safe to say that... Uh, myself and my viewers have a tangible contract with what a dog is so therefore dog is tangible contract and the word the is non-tangible contract and you can look this up in the etymology dictionary you can parse the words and you will find this to be 100 percent correct dog is a tangible contract verb being modified by the which is a non-tangible contract adverb in the fiction, you cannot have a verb unless it's being modified by an adverb. So, the dog is running very fast. The is an adverb modifying dog into a verb. Is is an adverb modifying running into an adjective, which is coloring very into an adjective, which is coloring fast into a pronoun. So we have an adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun scenario. Those are two syntax scenarios out of the five syntax scenarios that are available. In all my years of syntaxing, I have never run into a pattern that violates those five rules, those five patterns. I'm going to continue on with the syntax lesson, and I'm going to do a little more complicated uh, sentence. So if you have your pen and paper out, you may want to write this down. You're very welcome to those of you who thanked me and have left. Okay, so here's the sentence. As a rule, comma, compassion should trump egoism, period. So what it looks like you have three words as a rule, and then you have this, the punctuation of a comma, and then you have compassion should trump egoism, and that's four rule, uh, words. So you have three words in front of the comma and then four words after the comma. Again, as a rule, compassion should trump egoism. 
So again, we start at the end and work backwards. Do we have a tangible contract with what egoism is? I'll look in the comments to see if uh, we get any yeses or noes in there before I proceed. Egoism, if you look up the word ego, if you parse it, or if you ask someone on the street, what is ego? What does it mean when someone has an ego problem or a problem with their ego? We have a tangible contract with what that means. It means someone has a, a big head, right? Whereas when you take a word like the, in comparison, you don't really have a tangible contract with what a the is or what an an is. But ego, ego is different. Ego is based on a tangible concept. So therefore, egoism is tangible contract. What precedes egoism is the word trump. Now, in the sense that it's used here, Trump is tangible contract. We have a tangible contract with what it means. Like if you're playing a card game and you have trumps, you know what that means when this trumps that. We have a tangible contract with what that means. Could you please repeat that in quantum grammar, dog Latin slave? Sure. As soon as you show me your knowledge level of quantum grammar, I will communicate with you on that level. Be more than happy to. As it stands, we are syntaxing a sentence and you'd be, I'd be more than happy to hear your contributions to the matter at hand. Dog Latin, slave. So we have tangible contract e egoism and we have tangible contract trump. Now, the word that comes in front of Trump is should. Do we have a tangible contract with what should is or not? Yes or no? Is should tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Tora Joe, have you parsed the word should? Just like we parsed the word very. Have you parsed the word should? Have you looked it up? and found what the nativity root meaning of that word is. Because as we did in the other sentence with the word very, we looked it up and we found that we do indeed have a tangible contract with what the nativity root meaning of that word is. Dog Latin slave, are you interested in what I'm teaching here or are you here for some other reason? So what I will do is I will look that up in the etymology dictionary. If anyone else out there is also doing that. Correct. And then you click on shall. And the nativity root meaning of shall to owe, to be under obligation, guilt, debt. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a tangible contract with what guilt and debt are. From the Proto-Indo-European root, skel, to be under an obligation. I have a tangible contract with what obligation is. So therefore, the way I would syntax it, the concept I would syntax it under would be should is tangible contract. Okay, I see this dog Latin slave is just uh, not here to participate with the grammar here. They're here to inject other things, just like they're saying, don't take the whatever into your bloodstream. They're trying to put something into this live stream that doesn't belong here. 
So if I get one more comment from them that is off topic, I'm just going to block them. So let's get back to the matter at hand, which is grammar. Okay. I just put them in timeout. Maybe they'll get the message. So the earliest nativity root meaning of should is obligation. And I have a tangible contract with ob obligation is. So therefore, should is tangible contract. Now the word that comes in front of should is compassion. I also have a tangible contract with what compassion is. Then we have the comma, which functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence. So what do we have? We have four words, four tangible contract words. Now we know that syntax pattern is the three, four. So compassion is an adjective. Coloring should into an adjective in the future tense, which is 3.9 coloring Trump into an adjective, which is coloring egoism into a pronoun. Three, 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 four. I'm sorry, three, three point nine, three, four. Which leaves us with what precedes the comma as a rule. So let's start with rule. Is rule tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Anybody out there? Tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Rule, yes. Very good. Rule is tangible. How about A? Is A tangible or non-tangible? No, it is not. How about as? AS. Is that tangible or non-tangible? Nope. So we have as, which is non-tangible, a, which is non-tangible, and rule, which is tangible. So that's a very simple three-word uh, syntax scenario. What is the syntax? You can just put down the three numbers that you would use. So we have determined that as is non-tangible, A is non-tangible, and rule is tangible. And we know the rule that a non-tangible contract word is either going to be an uh, adverb, verb, or a pronoun. A non-tangible contract word would never be an adjective. So therefore, it's not a one, three, four. In the same sense that tangible contract words would not be adverbs, non-tangible contract words would not be adjectives. So it's not one, three, four. I think we should play some Jeopardy music here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so, rule, which is tangible contract, is either going to be a two or a four. It's either going to be a verb or it's going to be a pronoun because word groups or sentences would only end on twos or fours. Now, what comes before it is gonna determine whether it's a two or a four. And in this case, A is non-tangible contract. So, that means A is gonna be an adverb, which is modifying rule into a verb. Tora Joe. Non-tangible contract words will not be adjectives. So it cannot be a three, three, four. So we have a rule, which is adverb verb. Now, as I stated in the other sentence, when you hit that adverb, you can now take that entire thing away. So you can take away a rule, which leaves you with as standing by itself. 
So when you have a word standing by itself, what is that word? It can only be one thing. A word standing alone by itself can only be one thing, one condition of state in the fiction. And what is that? Does anybody know? A four, exactly. So it's a four, one, two. And it also follows the rule that nothing can follow a pronoun except for an adverb or a break in the continuance of the evidence. This complies with all the correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, rules, and it complies with the five syntax scenarios. That's how you can certify these things. That's how I certify my work on my YouTube channel. And I can do this all day, every day. Which again, leads me to repeat what I said at the beginning of the podcast. Does anyone out there watching this right now know anyone else who does this? Who comes online, live, and answers grammar questions, puts themselves out here, and puts their knowledge to the test? in a live scenario. If you do, please share their name or their YouTube channel or whatever in the comments section because I'd surely love to check it out. Because I'm just, you know, kind of blazing a trail here. And it's fun and I'm, I'm glad everybody here is with me and Tora Joe, I don't know, um, I actually don't know who you are. I don't know if Tora Joe is your correct name or not or whatever, but I will say that, um, great job, man. Seriously, great job. You've done some study, and I can tell you put some work in, uh, some quality work. How much? I don't. I have no idea, but whatever it was, it was quality work, and it's really paid off for you here. I appreciate your participation, and also everyone else here. So I'm going to draw this to a close. Um, oh, thank you for your viewership tour, Joe. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to draw this to a close. I got some other stuff to do. So I'm happy to uh, to have helped everybody out here. I'll try and go back and edit this and put it up so that uh, other people can learn from it. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.